heading down to Ushuaia was a, was a trip with it itself. I, I had already been traveling for almost two years and met all kinds of people. Uh, but this, this person I met was probably one of the most interesting people and uh, maybe a true inspiration to a lot of you. We knew it was a two and a half hour boat ride, so it could have been pretty boring. I decided to just walk around and see what I could find and take videos of, maybe pictures. And a few minutes before the boat uh, was getting ready to leave, I saw another motorcycle rider riding onto the boat. Um, the rider didn't have much luggage, so I, I kind of assumed it was a it was a local getting from one place to another. But this was actually when my trip took a turn and to something more interesting. And the main reason why I'm uh, making this video. I noticed the rider struggling a little bit while getting it parked, so I decided to continue recording just to see what happens. I soon found out it was another traveler on a motorcycle, which uh, I was a little surprised since it was already March when with reverse season, that means uh, it was almost fall. And not many people were heading down to Ushuaia during that time. Her name is Flavia, a 26-year-old from Switzerland who was backpacking for three months through Chile before she decided to purchase a motorcycle and become a motorcycle traveler instead, and then decided to head down to Ushuaia. So this is it, huh? She had someone already waiting on the other side, and we were asked to tag along. Kitty. Her and Flavia met a few days ago, and being that she's the editor of a motorcycle travel magazine, she thought it was interesting to do a write-up on Flavia. So she invited her over to her house, and we tagged along. She 
she's learning how to ride a bike, but yet she wants, she's, she's getting ready to go to, to Alaska. That's guts, I'll tell you. That's guts. Here we have Flavia from Switzerland. I just met her a few, uh, few hours ago we met. And uh, actually, I didn't even know it was a woman riding a mo motorcycle inside the <laughs> boat to cross out here to... Um, Porvenir. Porvenir, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, horrible with names. <laughs> and you're riding a motorcycle. Um, tell me a little bit about your, your adventure, your trip. My trip. Uh, so my trip started uh, the 2nd of December 2014. I arrived in Santiago with my mochila. And then with your backpack? With my backpack, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and I traveled south Chile for three months just with my mochila and hitchhiking. And um, when I was in the Carretera Austral, um, I saw a lot of people with their motorbike. And every time I saw one, I was like, fuck, that seems so cool. I want to do that once. <laughs> I have to do it. Next time I'm traveling, I'm doing it with a motorbike. And when I got to Punta Arenas, there was this girl, um, there was her motorbike um, parked in front of the hostel where I was staying. And she told me that she bought a motorbike uh, in Santiago two months before. No license, no prior experience, nothing. And she drove down to Ushaya. And, um, a motorbike, a motorcycle, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, so I told her about how cool I found it was and how yeah that I would love to do that and she told me well I'm leaving in a couple of days I'm selling my bike so if you want it it's yours and I thought it was crazy but I bought it you bought a motorcycle yeah and obviously you're an experienced motorcycle rider no well, I used to go with my dad but in the back uh, like yeah, sitting in the back of the motorbike, but I've never drove a motorbike. Before. You've never ridden a motorcycle? No, no. <laughs> okay, you're 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 in down in Chile, in South Chile, and you decide to buy a motorcycle and travel to the end of the world, right? Yeah. Which is Ushuaia. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah well I, I bought it and I thought, well I'm gonna learn and I'll see how it goes and um, two weeks later I took the boat from Punta Arenas to Porvenir, and here I am in Tierra del Fuego, and I hope that in a couple of days I'll be in Australia. Okay, so let, let me see I understand you. You bought a motorcycle two weeks ago, you've never ridden a motorcycle before, and you're driving down, the trip down to Ushuaia is what, maybe 500 miles? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, interesting, I see. And what's been your experience so far? I mean, how did you learn how to ride a motorcycle in two weeks and then decide to go? Well, the thing that when, I mean, obviously it's me, like it doesn't make sense buying a motorcycle when you don't know how to drive one. But I was in this hostel and one of the guy who was working there was from Florida. And he drove from Alaska down to Ushuaia. And, uh, been traveling for almost a year and he told me he could teach me and then there was that uncle of the owner of the hostel who is a mechanic on motorbikes and he told me I can teach you everything you need to know about a motorbike motorcycle whatever. <laughs> and uh, um, I was like well I I wish I really tried to find a good reason not to do it I didn't find any. So, so you're, you're, you're an expert on a motorcycle now after two weeks? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I... We had a, what was that little, you, you had a fall as, as you're driving in here? In two weeks, I think I fell like 10 times, but okay. it's okay. Well, I, have, um, I have my legs, my arms, <laughs> everything. Um, and, yeah. Well, we're uh, here in Polvenir, mm -hmm. and we're driving tomorrow. It's about, a, a, it's about... 85 miles of dirt road with wind winds about maybe 60 miles an hour we'll see how it goes yeah that's gonna be the test okay yeah. <laughs> awesome well I'll, we'll see you on the road see ya. <laughs> we arrived at kitty's house that night 
uh, I guess it was, uh, you could say a modest home. We had dinner, and uh, the next day we were off to uh, Flavia's official first motorcycle ride. Okay, so here we are in the uh, town of Porvenir. It's a tiny little town, about 7,000 people. We um, now we're heading to we're heading down to uh, Rio Gallegos. That would be in Argentina. We're in Chile right now, and it's about 85 kilometer, 85 miles of dirt road, which is no big deal. But sometimes there are winds of up to 100 miles an hour. And we're here with Flavia, which uh, she's gonna get her first training on off-road motorcycle riding. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. Friend, <laughs> our friend, she's the uh, CEO and editor of motosinfronteras.com, which is the first motorcycle uh, traveler website in uh, this part of the country. Look us up. I'll have a link on my on my um, on my website, and uh, it's this Kitty, Kitty. Here we are. Say say hi, Kitty. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys on the road. <laughs> okay, now, this is one of those few moments of my life that I kind of wish I was just uh, maybe a couple inches taller. And, of course, there's Flavia doing it the smart way. Now, of course, that's Kitty giving us directions and telling us that we're on the wrong side of a one-way street. And she changes my name while she's at it. Flavia and I were about the same height, so sometimes we have a little bit of a hard time moving our bikes around on a soft surface, being that uh, it's really top heavy and we're, uh, should I say, concentrated. So this is Flavia's official first off-road motorcycle ride. She gets confident pretty fast. She does really well. Of course, it helps that she's uh, driving a 2011 Honda Tornado, it's a, it's a 250 cc engine dirt bike basically with uh, with lights. She does really well. Um, actually, I'm having a hard time catching up with her until I saw that her um, improvised luggage, which consisted of her backpack from when she was a backpacker, a 10 liter container of gas, and um, recyclable grocery bag was kind of falling off to the side. I, I tried to signal her to stop. And so I had to kind of speed up, catch up with her, pass her, and, and tell her to stop. So, and uh, of course, the inevitable happens when you're when you're five five riding a bike like this, uh, with uh, that kind of luggage. Well, on the dirt road, it's it's uh, it's pretty pretty common that you fall. Something, of course, typical of a novice rider. When she was practicing, which was a few days before this trip, uh, the two weeks that she did practice learning how to ride a motorcycle, she would fall with all the luggage and because she was by herself, she would have to untie, unload all the luggage before picking up the bike, pick up the bike, and then have to load everything all over again. Okay. I'm trying to coach her through as best I possibly can in order for her to get off the bike without uh, dropping it. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. Si tiene que bajar por aquí, pero no puedes. No puedes? Okay, so we got to give her credit. She never actually no fell while riding, only while getting off the bike so uh, she was doing good most of the time
se pueden hablar con el... Ok, Flavia. That was um, about 275 miles of driving. That was on your first uh, your first motorcycle ride. How did it feel? Cool. <laughs> cool, okay. <laughs> the first day was mainly all dirt road. Yeah. It was, no, it was, I was expecting worse than that. So, yeah, actually it was... So you, you never really technically fell because it was just getting on and off the bike. So yeah. so you did good. I noticed you were going like 50 miles an hour. How did that feel? 50 miles on on the dirt. Yeah. But how, how much is it? That was about eight. You're you're averaging about 80 kilometers yeah. an hour. Yeah. I was just feeling good on this road. Like the bike really. I don't know how to say it in English, but Sagaro. <laughs> okay. I can say that in English. Um, it was what? Oh, okay, it was gripping really well. Yeah, gripping, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So, we're almost close to Shuai, I think. I figure we have about another, what, 70, 75 miles ago? 100 kilometers, yeah. About 100 kilometers. Okay, that's 60 miles, 62 miles ago. All right. Yeah. We're, uh, we're almost there. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, yeah. On one of our stops, uh, she's, she parks right in front of a no parking zone. I mean, what is she supposed to know? It's not like she has a motorcycle driver license or anything. Oh, uh, you didn't hear that from me. Awesome views. Uh, a few curves, and like Flavia said, this is her first experience on feeling curves on a motorcycle, which I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. to Ushuaia on March 20th. Fall was going to start the next day and we knew uh, the weather is going to start changing. So we were only going to be there for a few days, uh, enjoy whatever we could and start heading back north. And just like everywhere else we went, we never uh, made any hotel or hostel reservations before heading down to Ushuaia. But since we were pretty much quite late in the season, we weren't concerned. Most people were leaving, weather was changing, uh, so we knew we weren't going to have any problems. One thing for sure, I did not want to camp. I had no desire of camping at all. It was some really awesome views, especially as we got closer to Ushuaia. I'm not a great photographer, but we decided to pull over and we got some decent shots. In a 
discovering the curves, yeah? Yeah. Discovering the curves. <laughs> okay, here we go. We spent about five days down in Ushuaia, and I'd love to go again. I would prefer to go in the summer, which would be November, December, and, and January for down there because of the reverse season. Uh, you could enjoy a lot more. There's a lot more to see, and obviously it's a lot warmer. Flavia had her birthday down in Ushuaia, so we had a little get-together. And also, the weather was really, really nice. We were able to enjoy some days at the beach and do some uh, hikes and some riding. I guess we were really lucky. ¿Qué tenemos para almorzar hoy? Para variar, galletas. Hoy... No vamos a tener caviar y langosta. Hoy vamos a comer. <laughs> so Fabia, how's it been now? Do you feel pretty comfortable with the yes. with the motorcycle? Yes. Yeah. You haven't you haven't fallen since we uh, last rode, huh? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so so the trip to Colombia is a go. Yes? Yeah. All right. Here I'm trying to get a shot at some penguins we saw at the, uh, the National Park. Since it was really late in the season, we kind of missed out on a lot of the wildlife. There's a lot of great camping in um, Tierra del Fuego National Park, uh, especially during the months of November, December, and January. But since we were already um, late into the season, we're already March, the weather at night would get down to uh, probably 5, maybe 10 degrees. So I really had no intentions or desire to do any camping whatsoever. Nope, these aren't designer jeans Flavia has. It's actually mud on her pants but that she uh, got from riding in the rain. Okay. okay. All right, Flavia, so here we are. We made it to the end of the world. Uh, yeah, I finally made it. What are your plans now that you made it all the way down here? It's oh yep, that's right. It's Sorry, that's the smallest size they have.
For this boat ride through the Beagle Canal, we were actually looking for the smallest boat we could possibly find. It was a catamaran that could hold up to 130 people. And we found this one boat that was only for six people, which was really neat because uh, it was like having your own personal tour. The price was the same for all of them, but uh, the smaller the boat, the closer you could get to the islands and see the, the animals up close. And that's exactly what we were looking for. Fabia didn't join us on this trip. Um, she had to go get her luggage racks on her motorcycle repaired since I think she made had a, a few too many falls. So they broke off and she had to get them welded back on. The day before we went on this trip, we were supposed to go on a, on a trip where you go to an island and interact with the penguins, but unfortunately they canceled the trip due to the weather. And because we weren't going to be there much longer, we didn't want to take a chance and miss on going on any trip, but also we, we went on the Beagle Canal, and uh, this is what we saw. We asked this pair of French guys to take a picture of us, oh, and they turned on the video instead. And before heading back to Ushuaia, Flavia decides to kind of remodify her luggage system on her motorcycle with a pair of um, small backpacks she found at a grocery store. It's interesting to know that in, in most countries in South America, you could, you could camp pretty much anywhere, side of the road, uh, soccer field, in front of someone's house. And it comes in really handy when, um, when you're traveling to a place where there's long distances between lodging and um, there's just nowhere else, nowhere else to go. We made it to the far north end of the island, right before we crossed over to mainland Argentina. It was already about 10 o'clock at night, and then we realized there weren't any, any hotels. So we stopped at a restaurant, had something to eat, and the restaurant owner told us about this place where we could set up camp for the night. What looks like a house is actually a tourist information center. And uh, after we set up camp that night, the guy came out and asked us if he wanted to go inside. But we had already set everything up and we, wanted, we didn't want to put everything away. So we decided to stay outside and camp right there. On the part of the island where we were when we were getting back to uh, mainland Argentina, 
the canal was a lot more narrow. So the boat ride was only about 10 to 15 minutes long. And there was a ride every 20 to 30 minutes or so. So we weren't really in a hurry to break camp. We we're just kind of taking our time. And uh, before we headed to the to the line where we'd where we would get on the boat. So after a quick breakfast, we broke down camp, we packed everything back up, and got ready to head on off the island. And I guess this would be a demonstration on how to pack for a motorcycle trip. Once we got on the boat and parked the bikes, we headed out to the office to pay for a ticket. And uh, it was really nice because they just didn't want to take our money. They basically let us on for free. So it was really nice of them. Either that or maybe they saw Flavia's luggage and felt sorry for us. On some parts of the road, there were a lot of ostriches crossing while you were driving, and uh, Flavia tries to dodge a couple of them, and couldn't help but hitting one of them with her knee, and she describes the incident. She's telling us a story, but she didn't know the camera was on. And I'm playing it off like I didn't know. We're getting ready to take off, aren't we? <laughs> All right. Flavia was kind of in a hurry since she needed to be in Panama in July to meet up with her family where they were going to have a family reunion. So we only spent one night in uh, Comodoro with, with our host, Sebastian and uh, Andrea. Tuesday. Tuesday. So she was getting ready to continue her trip on her own. All right, all right. You tend to get to know people a lot faster when you travel together. I got to know her a little bit. And I realized she could be a good inspiration for a lot of people. We all have limitations, but Flavia is the kind of person that she's willing to follow her dreams regardless of whatever limitations she may have. Unlike most people who use those limitations as an excuse not to move forward. Or you can look at it from another point of view. 
like our host Seba said from Comodoro, it's kind of like a combination of being crazy and really brave. We spent almost two weeks traveling together, so I kind of like to think that maybe she learned something from me, something maybe that I taught her or maybe something I said that could eventually help her along the way on a trip. But to tell you the truth, I think I actually learned a lot more from her than she did from me.